Hello, there is Fimpossible Creations and it's first part of a tutorial in which we will use many different Fimpossible Creations plugins to prepare a sort of project which will demonstrate in what way you can use these plugins. It will be nothing complex, but it should give you some ideas how you can use these plugins. First part of the tutorials will cover things like setting up additional bones for the character model to be used with the procedural animation tools, setting up character movement, adjusting the procedural animation, and tweaking some humanoid animation and exporting it back as generic animation. Ok, let's get started! For this tutorial we will use Creature Insect Model. Also in the video description you will find links to all assets I used in this video. So now we want to use Tail Animator on the Antennas and Bone Stimulator on some other parts. And to use these plugins we require bones in Skinned Mesh Render. But if you go in the Kyra key, you will find that there is only head bone. And we need to add manually all of the needed bones in the modeling software. And we will add new bones to the antennas, to the back spikes, and also bones to these small arms on the front of this creature. Let's open the model file in the modeling software. And I will use Cinema 4D since I'm familiar with it. All of the things I do here, you should be able to do the same in your modeling software. So I will just speed up the process, just to give idea how it can be done. So first thing is just creating chain of the antennas and placing it in the right positioning. Then creating bones for the front arms. The perspective in 3D always is tricky, so it's good to have few views and verify if everything fits the model. And for the back spikes, we will use just two chains of bones. Let's not overkill the performance with dozens of bones on each spike, so it should look good enough making it this way. Let's name bones correctly to not get lost later. Next step will be moving all of these new bones to the hierarchy of a skeleton. And it's very important to not change order of the original skeleton. We just need to add these new bones. If we swap some order of the bones, the skeleton animations would break probably. Ok, let's move front arms to the lower back. I just move them to the nearest bone and that's all. Let's move antennas to the head. Now when you move bones, there is nothing happening. That's because bones are not bind with a mesh yet. So let's skin these bones just on the polygons of the antennas. So we will just select vertices of the antennae model and polygon to vertex converter. Let's move new bones to the skin so it will be recognized by the skin. Then do auto weight on the antennae bones and select that we want to skin these bones just to the selected vertices. And as you can see the weights are assigned correctly. Now I will speed up the process and I will do the same on the all other bones. And now let's focus on the spikes. Let's select the upper ones, which are near to the bones chain. But let's not select every single spike, since it would probably look wrong on the so far vertices for the bone. Let's do binding and auto skinning. And they are ready. And let's repeat the same for the lower back. Let's check if it works. Yeah. Let's remove the not needed objects. Let's save it as Cinema 4D file to have some backup. And then let's export it as new FBX file, which will be used with Unity. Ok, it's here, let's move it to scene, let's apply the same material. Let's check if the animations are actually working with a new modified skeleton. And everything seems to be fine. So now we have prepared model for further procedural animation plugins. Now let's prepare character movement to be able to prepare procedural animation in practice way. Let's add third person camera script, which is included in most of my packages. And let's make camera follow creature. It's a bit too far, so let's change the distance ranges. Let's switch update to late update, since it will work better with a character movement. Copy play mode settings and paste in edit mode. And let's prepare character movement with free package called Grandfitter. And let's set Grandfitter movement component. It added all other required components. 
Let's adjust ground fitter ray casting to not be so long, but very much shorter. Ground layer mask can be default in our case. And let's check how it works already. And you see that character is animating, but we didn't do anything in the animator. And that's because ground fitter movement is using animation states with name walk and run and playing them automatically. Let's rearrange them in the animator. So we quickly create character movement for prototyping. Holding shift will trigger sprinting, but it's a bit too fast here. Let's adjust the movement speed. And for walk it should be much slower. Alright, it's good enough for now. Let's copy the settings. And let's paste them in edit mode to remember it. An additional thing we will do will be controlling animation speed for the locomotion animations. And we can use button below to add the animation parameter to our animator automatically. So now we have this animation speed float parameter. And now we can enable it as animation speed multiplier for the walk and run animations. But now the character movement will clip through any physical object. So let's implement this. We need to switch use physics, add rigid body and collider to this character. The collider can be a bit above the origin since ground fitter is using ray casting to place object on the ground. Now let's create some basic obstacle so we can collide with. Let's assign material to see it better on a scene and let's check if it works. And yeah, now character collides so it can work with some gameplay. Ground fitter is just quick solution for character movement for prototyping. You can use any other character movement plugin with this tutorial. First procedural animation tool we will use will be Leaning Animator. For Leaning Animator acceleration and grounded detection, we will use animator parameters. I will add true false parameter, which will define if character is moving. The ground fitter is supporting changing such parameters. We just need to put here right names and have them in animator controller. Let's add parameter for a grounded detection. All right, and let's use it with leaning animator. Here. Let's follow the leaning animator inspector view. And yeah, everything seems to be detected correctly. So now let's adjust the other parameters of a leaning animator. We need to assign some average speed on which leaning animator algorithm will base to animate the model. For more details, you can check the Leaning Animator tutorials. Now I will tweak a bit the parameters, so character will not lean so much to the sides. Also not lean so much forward when starting to run. And some reaction speed response tweaking. Yeah, it looks better. Probably later we will do some more tweaks, but for now it's okay. Let's finally move to our new bones and let's use tail animator on the antennas. So let's just select first bones of the antennas and let's add tail animator to them. Hit play and let's tweak it. But first thing you notice is this jittering when character moves and to fix it we need to change rigid body interpolation to interpolate. Now it's smooth but antennas are reacting too much. Let's just quickly change the interpolation of rigid body to not forget about it later. And let's tweak tail animator. First let's make the auto waving a bit smaller. And let's make antennas a bit more stiff. And let's put down the motion influence so the bones will react a bit less with the character movement. It's much better. Let's check how it looks when sprinting. And it seems the settings are okay so let's copy them. Paste in edit mode. and refresh the first bones, since copying it in play mode, copied first reference to the left bone, so we adjusted it. And yet the animator for antennas is ready. Let's work with the spikes on the back. And there are these bones, all right. Let's add bone stimulator on them. Let's automatically add bones to the two bones chains. Let's enable rotation bones. For sure the effect will be too big, but we will tweak it, yeah. So we just change the blending amount for the muscles and it starts to looking much better. 
Movement muscles react with a character movement in the world space and rotation muscles are reacting with a character rotation in the world but also with bones rotations in keyframe animation. Going with damping parameter lower increases power of a jiggle and rapidity makes it look more fast. Let's check how it reacts with a model. And yeah, this setting seems to be okay. Let's save them. Refresh boom references for other spikes. And yeah, these spikes are ready. Now we will add bone stimulator also to the front small arms. So we do the same as with the spikes. Adjust the reaction power. Check with different character movement. I just trying to make this reaction to fit the model. And it seems it will be okay for now. Let's copy the settings, save in edit mode. Refresh bone references. And we have it. Now what's more we can do is using bone stimulator on a spine and on the arms. So let's try adding bone stimulator to a spine. Let's add bones and it's getting the first child so we need to correct this. And again. So let's apply some dramatic settings and check how it reacts. And whoa, whoa, whoa it's too much, let's settle it down. So lower blend, more dampen. Same for rotation muscles. Let's see how it reacts now. And it seems it would look nice when muscles are blended more when character is stopping, but blended less when character is moving to avoid making animation when moving junky. So we could animate the stimulator amount here to go much lower when character is moving, then animating it back when character is starting to stop. And we will do it in a while. Now let's copy settings and paste in edit mode. And here is very simple script called disable stimulator on move. I include upgraded version of the script in the description. And what it does is just using reference to our bone stimulator, reading animator parameter called is moving to detect if character moves. And when it happens, transitioning bone stimulator amount to very low value. And when character is not moving, then changing it back to 100%. So let's use it. Let's move. Oh, let's unfold the bone stimulator to see the, if it's working. And yeah. So it will give some additional muscle effect when character stops to move and a bit when moving. Now let's try using it also on the arms. Add bone stimulator. Add the bone chain up to the hand. Initially some tweaking and enable rotation muscles. And it looks it's too much, so let's tweak it. And for arms and for some other limbs, it can be useful to use muscle blend curve. With it you can control amount of the bone stimulator on each bone. Value on the left is first bone in the chain, so in our case it's shoulder, so let's make it react a bit less. Then upper arm and forearm, we want to have some more effect. And last bone, like the wrist, we want to animate just a little. And that's how the muscle blend curve controls it. Do some more tweaking. All right, it's good enough for now. Let's copy the settings, paste in edit mode, and let's refresh the bones references. Second hand must have refreshed all of the bones. Let's add the disable stimulator on move component, drag and drop animator reference, and let's check how it looks now. All right, everything seems to work. Probably later we will do some more tweaks. 
But now let's move to the last part of this tutorial. This model have kinda nice animations, but let's say we want to use some humanoid animation from other pack on this model, but also keeping the generic rig for the better performance than humanoid and more precision. We will still need a humanoid rig to do it, so let's duplicate the source model and make it humanoid. Let's move it on a scene. I will just disable root motion. We will use this model with animation designer. Assign the same material for better preview. And let's edit this humanoid rig in Animation Designer. And I will use animation from free package called Basic Motions 3. Move forward animation, which looks like this. So it's not much going on, but I tweak it with uh, Animation Designer to look like this. I will just do some quick overview on the modifications, since there is a plenty of other tutorials for animation designer. And what I did with this animation is just using a bit of elasticness, which is almost the same like the boon stimulator muscles, but here you have some more detailed control. Then I did some modificators to change pose of the character. Also animate some of the spine a bit. Adjust head rotation after changes of the other modificators, some correction for the arms animation, and some additional rotation animation for the hips, and what's important, executed in affect IK mode. Then used some leg IKs, changing a bit the animation for the legs and for the pelvis, but just a little. So now when I have this animation on a humanoid rig, I can go down to the animation export settings and there is option to export it as generic animation. So let's select this animation, let's drag and drop to preview our generic rig. And you see it works, so we can assign it to the animator. I did pretty much the same thing on the running animation and I have it ready here. So it looks like this. It's also from the same free animation package. And now our generic rig moves like this. So you can use Animation Designer to retarget humanoid animation, correct it and export as generic animation. And yeah, that's all for the first part of this tutorial series. Well, I can't promise if the second part will be released in this week, but it should be out very soon anyway. So thank you for watching, I hope you get some ideas how to use the plugins. Subscribe to see more, hit the bell for notifications about new videos and see you next time, bye bye.